We're recording. We're, We're good. You ready, Corin? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you are joining us. I am Shauna, and this is my booktube page. Um, I wanted to make a video that is a little bit different. Um, so if you don't already know, not only am I like a avid reader, reviewer, all of that kind of stuff, I am also an author, I am writing a book, and I am a freelance editor. So I help other authors with their books um, on their way to publication, if they are self-publishing, or if they are trying to find an agent. Um, if you weren't aware also, if you haven't been around for very long, um, I used to be a literary agent. So it gives me kind of a unique um, mindset into what agents specifically are looking for and what a lot of publishing houses are looking for. Now, obviously trends change, but I have a very firm grasp on the basic thing, like the overall arching thing of what they try to look for. So obviously I know that they look for what's selling, all of that kind of stuff, what's trending. So I always try to be aware of all of that. With all of that being said, I wanted to film a video uh, to help other authors out there who are writing their books or who are in the editing phase already um, with some of the most common mistakes that I see as an editor. So I wanted to put together this list of the most common mistakes that I see authors make and not to say that they are, you know, the end all be all, but these are things to definitely look out for in your own writing as you're writing your book or if you're already in the editing process. So. Without further ado, we'll just jump right on into all of the tips that I have for you. Let's go. Okay, so the first mistake that I see a lot of authors make is telling the reader and not showing them. Now, if you are an author or you're in the writing community at all, you've probably heard this thrown around quite a bit. So I will elaborate on exactly what it means. So it can mean a lot of things, but there are definitely specific moments that a lot of authors will choose to tell the reader and not show us what is happening. So as just a very basic example, let's say that someone is cold. Instead of saying, the having that person, that character say, I'm cold, you can have them shiver involuntarily or they threw on a coat because of, you know, they threw on a coat with the chill in the air got worse. I, obviously I'm horrible at like coming off the cuff with it, um, but that is basically what I mean. So it could be instances as simple as that, it could be instances of showing the reader who a character is and not telling them who they are. Instead of listing out all of the character's qualities, she was nice and funny and loyal, you show the reader through her actions. And we, I wanna tell all authors this, your readers are not dumb. They do pick up on things. It is okay to be subtle in certain moments. Obviously, you don't want to be so subtle that nobody gets it. There's a fine balance, there's a line. So with the telling and not showing us, that is a big problem, is because the reader then is going to feel as if you don't trust them, as if they can't pick up on those instances themselves. And obviously, it's not a very easy thing to do, but that is why you keep this in mind as you're writing, Ask yourself if a moment feels clunky or feels weird or feels out of place. Just say, you know, is, am I telling the reader this or am, is, am I showing them? Is it coming through with my actions and the things that I'm doing with these characters? If that's not helping you, an editor definitely can point it out. So I have done that quite a bit with some of my uh, clients. I've definitely highlighted a sentence or a paragraph and been like, this is telling us, instead show us. And I will give them examples. So once they start to pick up on the fact that they're doing it and making this mistake, they start to see it a little bit more for themselves. It comes with practice. It definitely is not easy at first. It's hard to spot at first, but you will pick up on it eventually, I promise. So the next mistake that I see a lot of authors making as they are in the editing process with me um, that you can start to fix as you're writing the novel um, is very little character development. So just me personally, I love a good character arc. Seeing characters come from very, like where they were, and it doesn't have to be low. They don't have to be at like their absolute lowest rock bottom horrible spot and scenario. It can literally just be seeing a change of this character, seeing a growth of their time and how they feel and think about things and respond to things differently than how the book started. So 
I know again, this is not a very easy thing to do. All of these things do come with practice and just keep on doing it and keep repeating and keep going. However, some things to think about is, you know, coming up with funny things for your character. Let's say your book, let's say you're writing a fantasy novel and you are in a secondary world where there, let's say, give you a better example. We are in the world of Game of Thrones, but I want authors to do this and I will often have my authors do this whenever I'm working with them in the editing phase. Um, obviously it's not the best time to do it. You should do it a little bit sooner, but if I see that there is lack of character development, I will have them do this technique. So what I usually have authors do is I say, sit down with this character, this character, and this character. And that may not be all of their characters. It could just be the ones that I want to see the most growth from or that are lacking it right now in the moment. And I will have them write out a list of everything that this character loves. Even if we're in the world of Game of Thrones, even if that is where your novel takes place, I want you to write down their favorite artist, their favorite band. You know, do they like, do they like paintings? Do they like TV shows? Do they like movies? If so, what are their favorites? What's their favorite color? What's their favorite food? You know, do they believe, do they have a religion that they believe in? And really kind of getting down nitty gritty into who these characters are will start to help guide you. And as you start throwing things at these characters with your plot development and as that progresses through your book, you will start to see your characters already reacting. I know it sounds weird, but if you're not an author, you probably won't understand. If you're an author, I'm sure you get it, that when you start throwing things at your characters, you're like, oh, they wouldn't respond that way. They would definitely do this. And that's when you know that your characters are starting to grow and they're starting to develop more and more as a person. So that's something that I have a lot of my authors do and definitely give it a try, especially if you're in the beginning. I highly recommend doing it as you're starting your novel or as you're developing the idea or the concept and just sit down with your characters, you know, interview them, ask them specific questions, pretend that you are on a talk show with your character and ask them everything you want to know about their life and have them answer and it will definitely help you start to see who they are and help you develop where they're gonna go through your book. So the next mistake that I see most authors make is the pacing of their novel. It's not fast enough or it's too fast. So again, this is a balance. This is a lot of figuring out what is working for your book and your characters and what doesn't. And so the pacing can be tricky, <laughs> like I said, um, but you definitely want to have that fine balance this is where a lot of like beta readers, so people who are reading your book for the first time, can give you a lot of feedback. If you have critique partners, so other authors who want to read your book and in turn you'll read theirs and give them feedback on what's working and what's not, that will definitely help because sometimes pacing is hard to see for yourself. You feel like maybe it's perfect, it's beautiful, but someone else can tell you, oh, we're moving real slow, we're dragging our feet, you need to throw something in there. So that's where they can definitely come in handy. Pacing will definitely help if somebody is telling you that your pacing is too slow. A way to speed that up is throwing in not just action scenes, don't think action scenes. You don't have to have that, especially if you're writing like a cute, you know, modern day romance novel or contemporary romance. Like obviously you're not going to have these big battles and these fight scenes. I say that because I write fantasy and I am a fantasy editor, so that's mostly what I deal with. But you don't have to have that. You can definitely work in pacing if you need to speed it up. You can throw in an exciting moment and an exciting incident. It does not have to be action. It can just be something that makes your character's heart pound. And the way to make the reader feel as if it's a faster, snappier pace is to have those shorter sentences. So when you shorten and cut down your sentences, the reader is going to feel like they're moving through it quickly and all of these actions are happening fast and the pacing is going to feel a little bit faster. So that is a way to do that. And then on the flip side, for slowing down your pacing, Definitely try to space out a lot of your major plot points and the major beats that are happening within your story. I really recommend Save the Cat uh, Writes a Novel. This book is super helpful. I always recommend it to authors because it really helps you see the timeline of everything and figure out the major beat points and then where you can have little moments in between. So that way your pacing is still a little bit spread out. You're not doing it super fast. And like I said, on the flip side, you can have those longer sentences to make it feel a little bit slower. Have your character sit, have them have a sit down talk, have them eat dinner around a dinner table, something along those lines to really help us feel like we're sinking in for a moment, we're stepping back, and we are slowing down the pace just a little bit. Those will definitely help. I always recommend those things to my authors. The last thing that I recommend to authors is knowing your genre and therefore knowing your word count. So you'd be surprised that people make this mistake all the time, but really I recommend nailing down your genre before you start writing your story. 
when you come up with the concept, when you come up with the characters, really figure out what your genre is because that is really going to help you develop your story and it's going to help you plot out exactly how a lot of those stories are structured. And it's going to help you in the long run because those readers of those genres are really gonna know what works and what doesn't. And if yours doesn't fit within that, they're not gonna wanna read it. So I also tack on to this knowing your word count. Once you nail down your genre, really research what the word count length typically is for that genre. So for instance, a fantasy novel, especially a debut fantasy, you probably want it somewhere between 90 to 100,000 words. 90,000 to 100,000 words. I say that because you need a little bit more room to develop the world and develop the magic systems, especially within a fantasy. Now, if you're writing something like a romance or like a young adult contemporary romance, that's gonna be somewhere between like 70 to maybe 80,000. And I say all of this because especially if you're going to go into traditional publishing, agents are not going to request your manuscript or to see the rest of the story if it's not within that allotted, usually typical word count. So it doesn't have to be head on. You don't have to have it specifically at those word counts. But let's say someone wrote a fantasy novel and it is 190,000 words. As an agent, they are not gonna want to request it because they know they're going to have to cut down a lot of words and a lot of things that are going on in your book before they can start pitching it to publishers. And that's too much work for them because publishers are not going to wanna pick it up. I say this, there are some caveats. If you are a um, established author, that's a little bit different. Sometimes you can get away with a little bit more because people already know you, they like your writing style, you're already established. But when you're first starting out, really I recommend nailing down your genre and nailing down your word count. So just know that. All right guys, well that is the last tip that I have or the, the things, the mistakes that I see the most that authors make with their writing when they are in the editing process with me. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list. There are obviously lots of things, but these are really a lot of things that I want people to keep in mind when they start writing their book. So I highly recommend taking a look at these, reading the tips. I have a blog, which I put in the description down below. You could definitely check out the blog post that I wrote on this. I go into a little bit more detail on some of the topics. So you can definitely check out and see what I recommend to fix these problems. If you are an author and are in need of any editing services, definitely reach out to me through my website. I would love to hear from you. I would love to work for you and really develop your story. Um, but other than that, guys, I, oh, no, I didn't finish it. I'm sorry. Like this video, um, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon if you want to be notified anytime I post a new video. Um, and then other than that, yeah, I will see you guys in my next video very soon. Bye. Your sister's always into video. Yeah, but you get to be in it now. Yeah. Thank you, thank you.